Welcome back to Animation Teacher. Today we're going to be doing face planning, but before we jump ahead to do that, what we're going to do in this video of part one of face planning is we're going to design a easy to face plane uh, bust. So we'll name this face plane rig and we'll go create. Now this is a quick lesson on also how to rig characters. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create um, our sketches or our rig. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do already so I'm not even going to bother with a sketch for this. We'll just go straight ahead. Yeah. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to adjust this art here. Hmm. And I'm going to basically draw a wrestler, a wrestler. Okay. Now, the idea of uh, creating a rig in which you can face plane is you want to basically make sure it has rotatable parts. All right, so this is pretty rotatable. It's basically a slightly off uh, circle here. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the eyes. Okay, I'll shrink that a touch. Do a three quarter view. And we'll do a mask. So this is uh, kind of like a superhero wrestling mask. So for those of you who haven't uh, watched any of my other videos, I'm, I'll be using a lot of shortcuts, um, utilizing the contour editor tool here um, to create new points. I'm clicking control and to manipulate the uh, Bezier curves, I am just activating it by hitting um, alt. Once you have it activated, you can hold Alt to just do the one uh, side or just take both handles like that. Okay, so I'm just going to build that outwards a little bit more. Alright, I'm going to offset the eyes here. Now, it's the one thing I don't like about using the circle tool is that it gives you too many points so I'm just going to readjust this and I don't quite want a circle anyway I kind of want a uh, tapered circle it gives the eyes a little bit more personality that way alright Okay. Next up, I'm going to do my eyeballs. Let's 
zoom in here with twos. Alright. I'm going to copy this. Control C, Control V. I have two eyeballs. I'm going to shrink that just a touch. Um, so I'm going to add a curve to this again. So to add a point, you got to use your sub selection tool or a contour editor tool and just hit control there. I just want to soften this part up. That's all. There you go. Soften this part up as well. Okay, just a little indication of um, a nose here. Lastly, we'll do a mouth. Now we'll keep this fairly simple for now. And hmm, let's do let's just do a simplified nose here, shall we? All right. So actually, one last thing. Let's give this. See a tongue and some teeth. I'm going to flatten that. Control Shift F. Oh, Control or Alt Shift F to flatten. Just going to clean this up real quick here. This will be my tongue line. do that. I guess I don't need it for that part there. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm basically going to clean up my line. As you can see at the edge here, there's a little discrepancy. So I'm going to just highlight that, go under Tool Properties, bring this down a little bit, and go Start and End, set it to Round. Now I have a nice round section. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to highlight everything here. I actually want a little bit of a texture happening here, and I'll thicken up my lines. All right, cool. Okay, so once you actually have this, I'm going to go ahead and save. Once you have this breakdown here, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create um, symbols. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, head base. Okay. And all you do is you're going to take the part, control C, hit base, control V, and then we'll go ahead and do the rest uh, for the other part. So I'm going to go uh, mouth, add, 
um, mask add nose add close I wait add close pupil add so as I'm doing this um, what's happening is I'm creating all these symbols and they're basically just staggered everywhere here and I'll just have to peg that peg them all and add them to my composite if you misname or forget something you can always go in and click this uh, layer properties Missing one more far. I white far. I pupil and close. All right, so I think I got everything. What I like to do is I like to actually um, set all of this in a separate composite. So I'm going to hit Control H and I will name this. Make sure you have set it pass through and I'm going to name this uh, wrestler head comp. I'll close that and I'll go ahead and attach the head base and attach the mouth uh, the nose, the eye, or the mask, the close eye white, or sorry, let me see here. We'll go far eye white, then far pupil, close eye white then close pupil. And this here is actually my sketch. Alright. So I'm going to connect that there and have everything arranged like so. Okay, so let's go back to our sketch and we're going to cut and paste pieces again. So, or copy and paste pieces. I'm gonna highlight the mask, control C, Actually, let's work um, right to left here. So, go to my sketch, Control C on the mouth, paste on the mouth, go back to my sketch, Control C on the nose, go back to my nose, Control V to paste, go back to my sketch, Control C for the mask, go to the mask peg, Control V to paste. Now, you'll notice the whole time, I'm actually, I have the select tool selected because that'll actually allow you to select the art. So, next up is my far eye white, control C, control V, far pupil, control C, control V, um, close eye white, control C, control V, and finally, pupil, control C, control V. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide my sketch there. And this is everything separated currently. The next thing I wanna do is I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to hit this button, uh, this button here. What is it? This button here, set properties on many layers. And I want to make sure it's set to separate mode, and I'm going to use parent peg. So these two are important because the separate mode allows you to basically animate um, on a flat plane, which prevents any tweens from bouncing back and forth. As we animate, 
uh, you'll see what I mean, or as we build things, you'll see what I mean. For now, just set it to separate mode. For use embe embedded pivot, basically this allows you to make sure your parent peg um, on top of your symbol shares the same pivot point once you set it. So to set your pivot points, you select the symbol and select this translate tool here. Some people can always use some people also use the rotate tool. I like to use the translate tool. And you're gonna just pull out here. Um, oops. Hmm. Actually, before we do that, let's give it some uh, pegs. So I'm gonna highlight everything and hit Control Shift P. Um, that's not it. Control Shift P. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like Snagit. Um, okay, that's odd. I don't need that. Okay, to create pegs, we're going to highlight everything. Insert. Highlight everything. Control P. Nope. So, <coughs> so what we're going to have to do, uh, since Snagit took away my shortcut, I'm just going to click all of these and hit Control P. If you're not capturing video, uh, you, you could probably just hit Control Shift P. Alright, so now that I have my pegs, I'm going to go in and set, set the pivot points. So here's my head base. Once again, I'm going to use my translate tool. Head base, I like to use the base of the head usually. Uh, then I'm going to click the mouth. For the mouth, I like to use the mandible because that doesn't move. Uh, the teeth part usually doesn't move. Some people like to use also the base or the middle. It doesn't really matter for our purposes today. I'm going to go to the nose, just put it in the middle. Uh, the mask, again, I'll just put it in the middle. The eye white, I'll put it at the base. The pupil, I'll put it in the middle. The eye white, I'll, oops, I'll put it at the base. And the pupil, I'll set it there. So once you've set all these, um, or once you've moved all of these pivot points using the translate tool, you can set everything by hitting the transform tool. So now, when I click on the symbol, you'll see the pivot points are where I assign them. Okay. So that's basically uh, how to set up a basic rig. The next thing we'll do is we're going to set up the colors here. So I will set up a color palette. I guess I can use this actually. I'm going to get rid of these colors. Oops. I'm going to get rid of these colors here. And I'm going to design a color palette. So this will be wrestler. Um, head outline. Wrestler head fill wrestler mask outline wrestler mask fill Wrestler mouth, or we'll, we'll say skin outline. Sk 
in outline. Wrestler teeth outline. Wrestler eye white, which we'll use for the teeth as well. Wrestler tongue outline. Wrestler tongue fill. Wrestler will go pupil outline. Wrestler pupil fill. All right, so we have everything now. All we have to do to color is select the color, select our designated uh, color swatch and go ahead and fill or find the color. So that's our outline. What's nice is you can always change this as you go. Oops. Our fill do that. Um, mask outline. I was thinking kind of a purpley. Uh, dark purple is nice. So we just click that. Double click the color. Oops. Let's go with that one. Oops. Mask fill. We use the light, lighter version. Um, let me see. Eye whites. Eye whites generally just white. We can go. Uh, let's give it a slight color. There. So I whites. Let's click this. So I whites. I whites. Uh, skin outline. That'll be. Let me see. In the orangey kind of color here. All right, that's good. Okay, just gonna go into the drawing mode here. Click one to get in, and then we'll just try to fill that there. And we'll do the same thing here. Um, teeth outline. Actually, let's do this skin outline first. Skin outline. Now, Whenever you have a discrepancy like this um, and you want your skin outline basically to be on top, you just select that. Then you go to drawing, arrange, bring to front, and that'll hide it nicely. Teeth outline. All right, let's find a color for the teeth outline. My guess is it's just a little bit of an off white. There, that's good. There it is. 
oh, we don't have a, let's, let's get our tongue action first. Okay, so there's our tongue outline and our tongue fill there. Now we need, I'm just going to rearrange this to go underneath my tongue fill. There we go. And I'll name this wrestler mouth inside. And we'll make that dark. Yeah, that's good. You can even do a gradient if you want. Radial gradient. Let's try this. It's pretty good. Let's flip the colors around. There we go. Now, if you ever decide to do a gradient, uh, you can control the gradient by holding down the contour edi editor and click gradient and texture. When you click that, you're going to get this um, icon, this editor here. You can shrink it, you can rotate it like so, and you can move it. You can also change the scaling of it as well. So it's pretty versatile. All right, so that's enough with the mouth. So we have our mouth. Actually, I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Let's do a linear instead. I think this gradient might be a little too much. There. All right, that's better. Hmm. Why don't we change this head fill to green, blue? I guess it worked with red. Maybe this isn't working. All right, let's keep it darker. Yeah, let's do that. All right, sure. All right, lastly, we're going to do the eyes, uh, the pupil, pupil outline. We'll do a Let's do a blue. Let's do a dark blue. There we go. And people fill. We'll do a light blue. A royal blue. And let's just do an eye white for that as well. We'll just use a quick ellipse here, but I'm going to actually get rid of the line, so I'll just do that fill there. Copy. Oops. Okay. Okay, I'll just save this. All right. There we go. So we have our um, really, really red. Uh, wrestling dude here. Okay, now that uh, we have that set, I'm going to give him a neck. So let's just create a neck. And we'll do a rough kind of torso as well. So here's our torso and our neck. 
So we'll start with the neck first. I'm going to go ahead and steal the uh, head outline. And head fill. Going to apply the same settings. Uh, I believe it was charcoal. Uh, to s see the line weight, I'm just going to click on this here. So it's 7.7. .7. I just want to keep everything consistent here. So 7.7. .7. There it is. Once again, I'm holding Alt as I'm doing that. So here's my neck piece. It's going to extend past the actual head. head. All right. Now, once again, I'm going to go in and make sure uh, this is set to parent peg here. Same with the torso, set to parent peg. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my torso. Select my. Let's do. Uh, let's do another color here. Let's go to Tool Properties 7.7. There .7. we go. And we're going to fill. Oops. Let's do that again. Mask outline, mask fill, and I'm just going to do like some shoulders. And this is basically the bust. We don't need we don't need much else for the moment here. All right. So here we go. We have our bust. We have our head. We have our neck, and we have our features. Uh, I am going to hit Control P to give these guys pegs. Oops, and we'll set the anchor points by clicking the Translate tool. I'm going to keep my head down there and my torso pivot. It doesn't really matter there. Okay, so this is step one of building a rig. We're basically creating all these pieces of pieces of art here. Part two is actually the rigging itself. I'm just going to put this uh, head comp. Uh, usually I wouldn't do this, but I'm just going to put the neck and the torso as part of the head comp. So we get basically one nice organized uh, timeline here, or node view here. All right, so. What, I'll, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you uh, how to create uh, working eyes. Okay, so here's the neck. It's the head base. I'm just trying to organize this so it's easier for you to see what's going on here. The nose and the mask. Okay, so one of my fun things to do is show you guys how to create cutters for the eye. So right now, if we move the eye ball past the mask, you basically see right past it, right on top of it. So what we want to do is actually create a cutter. I'm going to go into the node library here, and I'm going to find the cutter here. So I have this silly little story that doesn't make much sense, but it does to explain the story or explain what goes on here. So one day, um, one day, Mr. Pupil says to Mr. I White, hey, Mr. I White, um, can you cut me? 
So Mr. I White says, sure, hop into my cutter. So he hops into the cutter. Now, whenever you hop into something, you're going to stay on the right-hand side. So I'm going to move the I White over to the other side now. Okay, that can stay where it is there. But I'm just going to move him over. So now, the pupil, nothing's happening yet. The pupil says, okay, Mr. I White, I'm in the cutter. Now come cut me. So Mr. I White goes over and jumps on the left-hand side. And he cuts Miss Pupil. But this is kind of reverse. So I'm going to go click on my cutter and hit invert. Now, you don't see Mr. I White, so you need to run another connection. I'm just going to move this over aside. You have to run another connection behind Mr. Pupil. So now you have that. Okay, so what's happening here is you have the pupil going through the cutter and it is being cut by this I White. At the same time, the I White is going behind the cutter or behind the pupil so we see underneath. Now the one little discrepancy we have here is we have this um, skin outline. So a couple of things you can do is you can basically, I'll, I'll show you one way, you can use a color override slider in there and click under this box here and you're going to hit render selected colors only and you're going to go ahead and find the teeth outline or sorry the eye white click there and hit render selected colors and there you'll see that it's uh, cutting it and we're seeing a little bit of the eye white color uh, cutting through there now couple of things are happening here. The first thing is you'll notice the the line isn't cut exactly. What What's happening here is if I click on the actual line artwork you'll see that because it's line artwork it's not masking it properly because it's cutting it to the center of the line. So you have two options. You can convert your lines to fill or you can separate the cutter. So what we'll do is I'm going to, s I'll actually do both. I'm going to select this line, Control C, and I'm going to paste it on my overlay, Control V. I'm going to go back to this line. I'm going to delete the fill, select the line, go into my tool properties and click this pencil to brush oh my filters disappeared alright so I learned something new there so that technique won't work I'm gonna undo that so what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna get rid of this um, color override and what I'll do is uh, inside the eye white I've separated the line into uh, the overlay layer here and what we'll do is we're going to copy control C and paste the same eye white I'm gonna run the same connection through here and this time I'm gonna layer it in front of the pupil I'm gonna go into the layer properties and under the drawing tab I'm going to only reveal my overlay art. Let's see how that renders out. Okay, that's still not cutting it well. So the next thing, the last thing I want to do then is I will have to create a cutter layer because of this texture. So to create the cutter layer I'm going to copy the art here and go into the overlay paste this now this is only because I have this texture here on my line fill that this isn't working I'm going to create a fill 
or convert lines to fill. So now it's going to give me a solid fill. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add something called a uh, cutter green. Okay. Um, whoops. Let me just fill that. I had to select a different color before I filled it so it remains the same. All right, so here's my cutter green. I'm going to go back to my node view here. And utilizing a underlay layer pass, I'm going to slip this between here. And this basically just reveals the underlay. So, still doesn't really cut it well. It's cutting too much. So for cases like this, when you have uh, these funny uh, brush patterns, you do have to fiddle around with uh, the masks a little, unfortunately. So what I would recommend is go into your underlay layer and then just enlarge the cutter just a touch. so that you don't see it anymore. Okay, so that'll do it fine. All right, so to recap, what we've done here is I've separated the eye white, so we have an overlay line. The eye white itself is on the line art layer, and the cutter adjusted is on the underlay art layer. So the underlay art layer here is being used to cut the pupil. Meanwhile, the entire eye white is being placed underneath, so we see everything. Over everything is just the overlay art of the eye. All right, got that? So now we have a perfectly masked eyeball. So let's do the same again on this side. Once again, I'm going to go into my eye white art. I'm going to copy the line art, control C, into the overlay layer, control V. And I'm going to do the same on the underlay art layer. But this time, I'm going to convert lines to fill. Next, I'm going to grab my cutter green and fill the inside. I'm going to go back to my camera view here. While my underlay art is selected, hmm. sorry, uh, there. While my underlay art is selected, I am going to adjust it if it'll let me. Whoops. Where'd it go? All right, let's, let's see what happened there. It's very odd. All right, let's try that again. Control C, Control V, Control V. Um, I'm gonna go convert lines to fill. Then I'm gonna fill this, take that away, go back to my camera view. There we go. On while I'm under the underlay art layer, I'm just gonna enlarge my mask a little bit. So to recap, I have again my overlay, my full line art and fill, and my underlay mask. Let's go back to the node view. Now, once everything is set up, once again, I'm going to use an underlay art layer. I'll set up my eye white up here. Set up my pupil down here. I am going to grab a cutter. This again is in the node library. 
There it is. I'm going to cut the eye. No, sorry, the pupil. So I'm going to run it through the right hand side of the cutter. Then I'm going to use the overlay to cut that pupil. I'm going to reverse the cutter. And I'll test this out here. And then the last part I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the overlay art to go above everything. Actually, we could probably just find that overlay layer here. So you have two options here. You can either copy and paste the layer or the uh, symbol and only activate the proper art layer or you can go into the node view and find overlay layer here and that should do the same thing there cool all right we're gonna file save um, next we're going to mask the eyes into um, actually well why don't we just mask this mask and the eyes into the head so to do that I'm going to create another composite so control H and we'll name this um, masked eyes comp We'll set this to pass through and I'm going to attach everything to this composite there we go and I'm going to give it a master peg so I'll select everything and hit control P and I'll call this uh, Let's set this to separate. I'll call this masked eyes master peg. All right, and I'll set the anchor point using the translate tool. There we go. So the idea with this is I want to mask all this behind the head base, which is here. So we'll do the exact same thing we just did. I'm going to go into the art of the head base there. I'm going to separate the overlay. Oops. Uh, the line art. Control C into the overlay layer. Control V. Then I'm going to create a fill. Convert lines to fill. And I'm going to fill it with the cutter green. Get rid of the outline and extend this a little bit out. Okay, just nudge it up. I'm hitting the arrow keys to nudge it up there. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna take the overlay layer I know this I know I want to do this already so I'm just gonna wedge that in front of the uh, masked comp here masked eye comp okay and I want to use the underlay the underlay I can find here and I'm going to use the underlay to cut the mask. Here's the cutter. So here is my mask comp. I'm going to take this, run it through the cutter. And I'm going to use the underlay of the head base. And I'm going to cut that. And I'll just inverse my mask. 
There we go. So now we have this going in there. Cool. So to recap, we have our eyes being cut by the mask and the mask being cut by the head base. Now because we set our pivot points to reset, just parent up to the peg and hit R. So that resets everything nicely. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, uh, I just realized my nose um, should have a skin outline or a wrestler head outline. So I'll just do that right now. It's in the line art layer. Oops. Let's go into the drawing view here. Okay. Um, I'm going to mask the mouth as well. So let's grab a. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit more. So we'll grab a cutter. We can actually steal a cutter from here. Control C, Control V. And we're going to cut the mouth. So the mouth jumps into here. And we're going to use. Actually, let's see here. We can actually sandwich this between there and there and use the underlay to cut the mouth there so that. Ah, yeah, that works. All right, so the reason why we didn't have to set all that up again is because my overlay layer is also, in addition to being above the head base, above the mast, eyes comp. It's also above the mouth, so I don't have to do anything with that. And underneath everything is the head base, which is also underneath the mouth here, so I don't have to do anything with that either. That's why um, the mouth works. Lastly, I want to be able to parent the facial expressions. Um, so I'm going to name this mass size face master and I'll close that and I'll, I want to be able to control basically uh, the eyes, the mask, the nose and of course the mouth. Okay so basically it's just parenting up here it goes from the mouth to the whole face so I can like mask that. Now the nose I'm probably not going to take that nose too far, so I'm going to leave the nose for now. Um, and there's the neck and the torso. All right, so why don't let's complete this? Let's complete this rig. So I want then this head to control this. Face. So I'm going to take a line from the head and connect it to the face. So this way I can move the face, but if I parent up again, I can rotate the head. Um, then I would like actually the neck to control the head base because I'd like to do this. And then obviously the torso should control everything. There. There we go. So everything is parenting up. Control B to parent. Okay, I want to adjust that face master. Just put it on the nose line there. All right, so everything's parented up. Starting from the pupil, to the mask, to the face, to the head, to the neck, to the torso. And that, my friends, is a full rig for the upper body. I'm going to file and save. Okay, in our next lesson, uh, we'll start to play around with the multiplaning aspects uh, of this rig.
that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.